It's an incredibly busy day here at Magic Kingdom, and I'm going to show you the best ways to use Genie Plus. Hey, ma'am fam, I'm here at Magic Kingdom during one of the busiest weeks of the year to show you all my best tips and tricks on how to use Genie Plus. I know the system can be incredibly confusing and overwhelming, but on days like today where multiple rides have 100 plus minute waits, it can also be your best tool to avoiding those. So we're going to give you a Genie Plus 101 or a refresher, let you know about all the changes, plus the train is back. We're going to ride the train together for the first time in many, many years. I'm so excited. Let's get to it. Kicking this baby off with a little Genie 101 refresher. Now I'm going to sprinkle in Genie information throughout the video. I know it's very dense, it's very informational heavy, so I'm going to do my best to share all my tips and tricks as we go throughout the day. But as a high level refresher, Disney Genie is the system that replaced FastPass Plus. It debuted in October of 2021. There are three versions of Disney Genie. There's Free Genie, which is just an add-on feature in the My Disney Experience app that can recommend things to you based on the crowd level and your interest, as well as the tip board and the dining tip board. There is Genie Plus, which is a pay per person feature, essentially replacing FastPass Plus. This allows you skip the line access at over 40 attractions across all four parks. And then there are individual rides, which I call fancy rides. Those are a cost per person per ride to ride those specific attractions. There's one in each of the four parks. And last but not least, you're going to hear me say the phrase lightning lane quite a bit today. Lightning lanes are simply the expedited queue at the attractions, the physical place you go. They have them at both Genie Plus attractions and fancy rides. Essentially, they are just the same thing as the fast pass queue. It is the expedited line you're going to go through. Why the whole system's called Disney Genie and then the place at the attraction is called the Lightning Lane, I'll never understand. It feels like they could have branded that to fit together a little bit better, but that is the first thing you need to know. When Genie Plus debuted, it was $15 per person per day. However, recently they've gone to surge pricing where the price of the service will vary based on how busy the park is. The highest we've seen it is $29, which is actually how much I paid for it today. The lowest is still $15 per person per day. Obviously, that makes quite a difference when you're adding up $15 versus almost $30, especially if you've got a bigger party. But the more expensive Genie is, the more crowded it is, which makes it seem like you may want to use the service more. We're going to get more into fancy rides in a little bit, but fancy rides have always been surge pricing. Those prices for those four attractions across each park have always varied based on crowd levels. Those four attractions are Seven Doors Mine Train here at Magic Kingdom, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind over at Epcot, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and Avatar Flight of Passage at Disney's Animal Kingdom. We'll put a pin in that because we're going to the mine later. Now at the beginning of this video, I said I was going to show you the best way to use Genie Plus. And there are lots of different things you can do with Genie Plus. There are lots of different ways you can use it. You can book things early, you can park hop, you can stack, and we'll talk about all those things. But there is an answer for the number one best way to use the service. And I will tell you the best way to use it after a suspenseful break from the Main Street Philharmonic. The best way to use Genie Plus? is to not only use Genie Plus. You want to use a mix of Genie Plus, maybe even fancy rides, attractions that I call filler attractions, which don't normally have long lines, shows, entertainment, snacks. You want to use a mix of all of these things, and that's truly what will help you craft the perfect day. Genie Plus is an awesome tool, but the idea that you're going to be able to get a Genie Plus lightning lane for every single attraction that you want at the exact time you want, is possible, but it's a little unrealistic. So what I like to do when I'm coming to the parks with friends and family, the best advice I can give you is to use Genie Plus on those big heavy hitter attractions. In this park, it's going to be things like Peter Pan's Flight, Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean, Space Mountain, Splash Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Save Genie Plus for those. Then in between your Genie Plus lightning lanes, go on attractions as they have lower weights. See shows, see the parade, meet characters, have snacks. Continually be booking Genie Plus so that you always have at least one, uh, but fill in with other fun things throughout the day. And that's exactly what we're doing. And you know what? I've already been talking way too long, so let's get to our first attraction. We'll spell some more deets along the way. We're headed into Liberty Square to kick things off today. This is actually my first Magic Kingdom video I'm filming in 2023 to put you in a time and space. It's January 3rd. The holidays just wrapped. There's still some lingerings of decorations. The crowds are still here because it's also a race weekend this weekend. So as I was looking at the wait times today, I was looking at 100 plus minute waits at multiple attractions across the four parks, hour long at most things, but we're gonna have a great day and not even worry about it. Oh, you really can't beat how pretty she is, can you? A beautiful castle. And I'm very curious with the 50th ending this year, it ends in March. Are they gonna take off the 50th decorations but leave the paint job? I. 
I don't know. I don't know if anyone does. I'm sure somebody knows, but I'm, I'm very curious to see if they'll leave the paint job or if they'll paint it a different color again. And more importantly, let's manifest this together. Or should I say manifest this together? Let us manifest that 2023 is the year that we get the dream lights back. I know it's a long way away, but let's put all our energy into that. All right, headed to my first Magic Kingdom attraction of 2023. I think it's a pretty good one. Opening day attraction, one of the most beloved in the Disney universe. We're in Liberty Square, so I bet you know where we're going. Say it with me now. One, two, three, the riverboat. Just kidding. Obviously, that's not an opening day attraction. Anyway, we're going to Haunted Mansion, and I am giddy about it. It's been a while since I visited those 999 happy haunts on this coast anyway. The last time I rode Haunted Mansion, it was in Disneyland. Speaking of Haunted Mansion, this year, Disney World's version is supposed to be getting the Hatbox Ghost, which is a very cool ghost that uh, Imagineer Yale Gracie, who's the mastermind behind most of the special effects at the Haunted Mansion, he tried to make it work and they couldn't quite make it work, so they retired it. Years and years later, a young Imagineer decided to reboot the uh, Hatbox Ghost and they had the technology to do it then. So the Hatbox Ghost has been a fan favorite at Disneyland for several years at this point. And he's finally making his way and going to materialize in Magic Kingdom sometime later this year. As you can see, Haunted Mansion is incredibly popular. It has a 65 minute wait right now. Like I said, it's one of the most beloved attractions in the Disney universe. Maybe the most beloved, I would say. It definitely is the biggest cult following. <laughs> Lucky for me today though, Haunted Mansion is one of the five lightning lanes that I walked into the park with. I walked into the park ready to go. A Haunted Mansion, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Space Mountain, Peter Pan's Flight, and Seven Doors Mine Train. I did that by a little thing called stacking, which we'll get into in a little bit. But before we can get into stacking, let's get into the basics of booking a Genie Plus attraction. So when it comes to Genie Plus, not fancy rides, anybody and everybody can book their first attraction at 7 a.m. That's right, somebody's setting an alarm early, friends. <laughs> Anyone and everyone, again, can book their first attraction at 7 a.m. And there are some attractions across the parks that you're going to want to do that very, very quickly. Slinky Dog Dash at Disney's Hollywood Studios, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure over at Epcot. Those ones go for the whole day, usually rather quickly. There isn't anything here at Magic Kingdom that goes within seconds the same way those do, but there are some higher priority attractions. Peter Pan's Flight and Jungle Cruise tend to be the attractions that go most quickly, followed by your mountains, Space Mountain, Splash Mountain, which will soon be closed, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, things like Haunted Mansion. Then you start getting into your Tier 3 attractions, which are things like Pirates of the Caribbean, Meet and Greets with the Princesses, some of the other Fantasyland attractions like It's a Small World, Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Also in your third tier would be sometimes attractions like Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. Then you get into your fourth tier attractions or what I like to call filler rides. These are attractions that are great. They may be one of your favorites. We all know and love them, but they don't tend to have long lines and they're not a great use of Genie Plus. These aren't ones you should prioritize. These are attractions like Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid, Mad Tea Party, The Barnstormer, as well as shows like Mickey's Philhar Magic. These are great attractions, but they're great filler attractions, meaning you can do them in between these big lightning lanes uh, because they tend to not have long lines uh, or they move through people very quickly. So when I woke up at 7 a.m. this morning, the first thing I booked was Peter Pan's Flight, because again, that's one of the most popular attractions here at Magic Kingdom. A few more basics for Genie Plus before we go ride Haunted Mansion and before we get into more details on how to stack lightning lanes, is that again, anybody can book it at 7 a.m. That's for Genie Plus attractions, not fancy rides and you can book as many as you'd like throughout the day. You cannot repeat attractions, and some attractions can sell out for the day, meaning they're so popular that they won't have any more times available. We'll get into more of that in a little bit, but I think it's time to hit Haunted Mansion. I love this touch point. Thank you. In the grand scheme of booking things, I actually booked Haunted Mansion second, but I got an earlier return time than Peter Pan's flight, which is what I booked at 7 a.m. Originally, I actually booked Thunder Mountain Railroad as my second lightning lane of the day. But thanks to the new Modify feature, which I'm a big fan of, I was actually able to see that there was a better time available for Haunted Mansion. The Modify feature kicked in about a month ago, and it was actually one of my biggest complaints about the service. You know, minus the fact that you basically need a collegiate degree to understand it. And the swinging costs now. But 
there was no way previously to modify a lightning lane if you booked something that maybe you didn't want to ride anymore or you thought maybe there would be a better time available you had to go in and cancel the original one and then try and book the new one but oftentimes it by the time it took you to do that, the new one you wanted was gone. You can actually now modify your lightning lanes. It's a three little buttons. You can either modify it for a new time for that attraction or for a different attraction altogether. And the best thing about modifying the lightning lanes is that it doesn't reset the clock. You keep the same time that you can book your next one, regardless of if you modify times or attractions. So as soon as I could, I booked Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, and then I clicked modify to see if maybe a better time popped up or a better attraction, and there was a better time here at Haunted Mansion, so I modified it to that. The modify feature will absolutely be your best friend when using this system, because another one of my best tips is to always have at least one lightning lane. You are not maximizing your dollar that you spent on the system if you do not have a lightning lane at all times. And now that you can book one and then modify it, you are not wasting any time looking for the perfect lightning lane. So as soon as you can, book your next one and you can always change it, at least for now. Haunted Mansion has so much cool lore and backstory. If you're into that kind of thing, learning how the Imagineers developed it, learning some of the secrets of the Haunted Mansion, definitely check out our uh, Best Kept Secrets of Magic Kingdom attractions series. I do a whole bunch of info on Haunted Mansion, some cool Easter eggs to look for. I'm a Disney history nerd, so I can't get enough of that stuff and hope you like that as well. Haunted Mansion is an opening day attraction, like I said, and it's been one of the most popular ever ever since its debut. There's no height requirement uh, and it's incredibly popular. So I'm excited for a visit to the mall. Okay, Welcome, foolish mortals, to the haunted mansion. I am your host, your ghost host. <laughs> Pro tip friends, the stretch room door opens underneath the ballerina, so if you want to get out of there first, go under the ballerina. But if you want to linger in there, you actually can hear the ghosts whisper things like, Get out! Obviously don't linger too long, let the cast members do their job, but if you stay across from the ballerina, you're more likely to hear the chilling whispers. just doesn't get any better than the Haunted Mansion. It's not my personal favorite ride in the Magic Kingdom, we'll get to that one in a little bit, but it is a classic for a reason, and it is Chef's Kiss Perfection. And from one classic to the next, we're headed to Fantasyland, and off to Neverland. As we walk towards Peter Pan's flight, let's talk a little bit more about stacking. Now the first thing you have gotta know about Genie Plus is that you can book your next one, either when you've used your first, when your first one expires, if you don't use it for some reason, or when it's been 120 minutes since you booked the first one, whichever comes first. Now a feature Disney added a few months ago is at the top of your tip board where you book your Genie Plus attractions. It actually tells you exactly what time you can book your next one. I find that to be an incredibly helpful addition. Always set an alarm for that time or a minute beforehand, so that way you're always booking one as soon as possible. But because of that 120 minute rule, you can actually do something people call stacking, which means if you're not planning on coming into the park until later in the day, or you've come into the park early and you're going back for a, a resort rest and you're coming back later, or you're starting at a slower park like Animal Kingdom and hopping into a busier park like Magic Kingdom, you can actually stack multiple lightning lanes for that afternoon by booking one every 120 minutes which is exactly what I did today. Now note, nothing I'm talking about includes fancy rides. Those are their own things. We're gonna get to those. But this is for your standard Genie Plus Lightning Lane. Again, you can book a Genie Plus Lightning Lane every 120 minutes. One caveat though, that 120 minute start time does not begin until that park officially opens. So today at 7 a.m., I woke up, I booked Peter Pan's flight at 7 a.m. Magic Kingdom didn't open till 9 a.m., which meant I could book another one at 11. 
But again, that little feature, that little bar at the top that tells you when you can book your next one, very helpful so you don't have to remember all of this quite so much. So at 11 a.m., I booked Haunted Mansion. Then at 1 p.m., I booked another attraction. And then as I was getting to the park at 3 p.m., I booked another one. So I walked into the park with four Genie Plus Lightning Lanes, plus a fancy ride, ready to go. Pizza Pan's flight. I don't know why I did a bad British accent. Hello. Probably because they're British, but still, wasn't necessary, and I apologize for it. Again, Peter Pan's flight is the attraction I booked first thing this morning at 7 a.m. And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to talk a little bit more about another little caveat with the system. And that is when you are booking from 7 a.m. to 7.30, you can't see what time you're booking. This is a next available system for Genie Plus attractions. You do not get to choose what time you would like to ride. And because of that, people were not booking attractions because they wanted to book a certain time. They wanted later in the afternoon. Or, so many people were trying to book an attraction at once that everybody would click Slinky Dog Dash Ride at 7 a.m. and it would say that their return time was 10 a.m. But by the time the system processed each person, you actually got a return time for 2 or 3 p.m. And this made people upset. Because of this, when you are booking an attraction between 7 and 7.30 a.m., when you look at the home screen on the tip board, it just says spots available. You click it and it tells you a time. You can then proceed or not, but my advice to you is if that's an attraction you want, go ahead and book it and then you can try and modify it to another time which is what I did it was a little bit earlier than I planned on coming into the park when I booked Peter Pan's flight so I went ahead and booked it anyway then I clicked that modify function and I pulled down a few times which I like to call fiddle faddle which is refreshing the screen and now you can refresh the modify screen which is chef's kiss amazing pull down a couple times see if a better time pops up and then change it to that time but that is something you need to know when you're booking early in the morning you're not going to know what time you're booking it for but this modify feature makes that a little more bearable. Stacking is a great way to use the system, especially if you are not the kind of person who wants to rope drop and get here as early as possible. Peter Pan's Flight, again, one of the most popular attractions in the Magic Kingdom, and it has been almost since opening day. I say almost because it opened up two days after the Magic Kingdom did in October 1971. It is a Fantasyland favorite, no higher requirement. You're going to board a flying pirate ship and sail over London and then off to Neverland with Peter Pan, Captain Hook, the rest of the Darlings, and of course, uh, Tinkerbell. Thank you! Pan's flight check. A delightful time as always, but gets very, very long. <laughs> we are headed now to Seven Doors Mine Train, the fancy ride as I call it here in Magic Kingdom. Fancy rides are individual Lightning Lane a la carte selections, which is what Disney called them when they first debuted. Basically, these are the top tier e-ticket most popular ride in each of the four parks. So if you'd like to skip the line, you have to pay a separate cost per person. That price does vary day to day, much like the new pricing for Genie Plus. It's going to be more expensive on busier days, etc. There are a few key differences in fancy rides compared to Genie Plus. For starters, they do not interact with each other. The 120 minute rule, stack, none of that matters when it comes to these two things. They're two separate things as far as the system understands. When it comes to booking a fancy ride, resort guests only can book those at 7 a.m. Anyone else can book them at the time that park opens, which means that in the case of very busy days and very popular attractions, they can sell out for the whole day before non-resort guests even get the chance to purchase them. When it was 9 a.m. today, as a non-resort guest, they only had times left for the very, very end of the night, so I actually didn't purchase one. I was lucky that I, because I was continuously looking at the tip board to book new Genie Pluses every 120 minutes, uh, I actually saw that one popped up for a convenient time, which is when I booked it. If you're not a resort guest, don't give up hope. If an attraction is gone by the time you're able to purchase it, uh, it can still pop up, but definitely not guaranteed. 
Another main thing about Fancy Rides, it's different than Genie Plus, is this is a system where you can pick which time you'd like to ride as available. I will say if you are a resort guest and you're able to book at 7 a.m., you're going to want to know what time it is as soon as possible because there's been times where I've kind of hemmed and hawed over what time I wanted to book Rise the Resistance and then by the time I actually went through with the transaction, that time wasn't available anymore and I got a time much later than that. So again, as available, you can choose what time you'd like to ride. However, you cannot modify it. It's like buying a movie ticket. Once you've locked yourself into a certain time, that is the ticket you've bought. You cannot modify it like you can now with the Genie Plus attractions. You can book up to two fancy rides per per person per day and those can be across parks so if you're park hopping you can book both Seven Doors Mind Train and Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind uh, but no more than two per person per day. I think that's all I need to say about Fancy Ride so we're off to the mine. Seven Doors Mine Train is our first thrill ride today. It has a 38 inch height requirement, so it's not a super big thrill, still pretty family friendly, and it's a great coaster to bring your kids on after you've tested the battle and say the Barnstormer. It's also incredibly popular. In fact, right this moment, it has a 130 minute wait. So I am glad to not wait in that. It was $12 for me to skip the line here today, which I understand adds up quite a bit when you have more people. However, Seven Doors Mine Train tends to be less expensive than attractions like Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind and Rise of the Resistance, which is typically the most expensive fancy ride of all. Seven Doors Mine Train is a really cool coaster though. I actually enjoy this one more every time I ride it because it's like part dark ride where you'll go through the mine with the dwarves, very cool animatronics, and part coaster with these state-of-the-art cars that swing back and forth like mine cars and go forward like a roller coaster. truly gets more and more fun every time I ride it. I love the dark ride element of the dwarf scene. I love the music. I just think that's a really fun ride. And it's unfortunate that it always has like a two hour wait. If you want to ride Seven Doors Mine Train and not pay for it and not wait in a long line, the best choices are if you're a resort guest, come early during that early <laughs> <laughs> Come early during, during that early theme park admission that Disney Resort guests are able to use. If you're a deluxe resort or DVC resort guest, come to the extended hours. Uh, if you're not a resort guest, then coming later in the evening can be good during fireworks time, perhaps, if you don't want to watch fireworks. Or, as always, with any Disney attraction, you can get in line up to the time the park closes. So uh, even if the line is an hour long, you can wait that hour after the park actually closed. So always an option for that as well. And actually, as we're headed to our next adventure, my alarm just went off and I'm able to book another lightning lane. We're headed to Storybook Circus right now for a very exciting reason. I'm literally giddy about it, but I'm gonna book a lightning lane along the way. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through booking a lightning lane in real time since I have from now until I get to the train station <laughs> to book one. Uh, as you can see up at the top here, it says I can book one now. And then it has my top picks. You can set up your top picks by setting up your day in the My Disney Experience app, and you can select which attractions are important to you. And then that pins them to the top of the tip board, which makes it much easier when you're booking Lightning Lights. You can edit them throughout the day. I like to um, uncheck things once I've done them so that only things remaining are things I haven't done yet. So taking a look at the wait times right now, it is five o'clock. Without doing any kind of refreshing or fiddle-faddling, Pirates has a 65-minute wait. Space has an 80-minute wait, but you can see I have one booked later for that. Splash has a 95-minute wait. Astro Orbiter has a 60-minute wait. Barnstormer has 40. Thunder has 80. Buzz has 70, just to give you an <laughs> sample of how busy it is. Uh, also, Splash was completely out of Lightning Lanes. Dumbo has a 40-minute wait. Mansion, 55. Small World, 50. Jungle, 65-minute wait out of Lightning Lanes. Da, 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 getting through some of these fillers. Uh, looks like Cinderella and Mickey are out of lightning lanes. 
Peter Pan's flight still has a few at the end of the day, which is great. Uh, Tomorrowland Speedway, 40 minute wait. Journey to Little Mermaid, 45 minute wait. I'm telling y'all, it is busy today. What shall we book? It looks like I have more time than I expected because there's quite a long wait for the train right here, but I gotta get on the train. It's the first time I'll have ridden it since it's come back for years. It's been closed to make way for Tron and uh, hoping to get on it sooner rather than later, but we got some time to pick a new lightning lane in the meantime. Getting off Disney Wi-Fi. I don't know why my phone thought that was acceptable. If you can, don't use Disney Wi-Fi. A lot of people are, and therefore it's very slow. Um, all right, I'm gonna fiddle battle a little bit. I'd really like to ride Pirates, and I would like to ride Pirates sometime around when I have Big Thunder, since those are somewhat close to each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and book Pirates. In a previous time, I would have told myself to fiddle-faddle for a little bit to get an earlier time, but I want to go ahead and book it so that I have kicked off the wait period for booking my next one. And now if you look at the tip board, it'll tell you I can book my next one at 7.05, which was two hours after I booked that one. But what I'm going to do is try and modify this. Boop. Modify, click those three dots, click modify. And then you can do what I call fiddle faddle, which is just refresh the screen. So I'm going to refresh the screen a bunch of times and hope that a better time than 8.05 pops up. Great success. After a few minutes of fiddle faddling, refreshing the screen, I was able to lock in a 640 Pirates of the Caribbean lightning lane. I had 515 at one point, but I got got by the genie, which is what I say when you see something you want, but you're too slow on it and it doesn't give you that time. I may keep fiddle faddling as I'm in line here because I have nothing else to do, but my current advice is book something as soon as you're able to and then fiddle faddle in the modify section uh, to see if you can get something better. The time has come, friends. Soon I will be boarding the Walt Disney World Railroad for the first time in forever. I am so excited. A little behind the scenes about me is when I worked at Disney, I actually gave the magic behind our steam trains tour and I had to learn all about how trains run and more about Walt Disney and his personal love of trains. It is rumored by those who knew Walt best that he built Disneyland just to get a bigger train set. So I love the trains. I love the importance that they have of Disney history. I could do a whole secrets video just on the trains. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see that or I'll have to do a new one soon at Magic Kingdom anyway. There's lots more secrets to share, but I am giddy about getting on the train again. I'm especially excited uh, because the train. Okay, I'm especially excited because I'm boarding the train in Fantasyland. It's going to drive through Tomorrowland and then end up at Main Street would be the next stop and then it'll continue on to Frontierland. But Tron is testing right this moment and the Fantasyland to Main Street leg is where you would see Tron. So I just love the train so much. I'm so glad it's back. I did wait a lot longer for the train than you normally would wait for the train. It is a really busy day here, like I said, but because the train has just come back, everyone's really excited about it. So I waited like 40 or so minutes to board the train. I wouldn't recommend that to a normal person, but it is such an iconic Disney thing. I just love it. I was also initially gonna get off at Main Street, but I was having such a nice time, I kept going, and now I'm in Frontierland, which actually works out because my next lightning lane is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. The train has three stations around Magic Kingdom, Fantasyland, technically Storybook Circus, but Fantasyland, um, back by Dumbo. This is the Frontierland station, right by Splash Mountain and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. And then of course your iconic classic Main Street station. If you do want to ride the train, please pay attention to the hours of the train. It does not run as long as most of the park most days, whether that be because of fireworks or because of the dark or other issues. The train often closes early, like today it closed at six. Uh, so I was one of the last people on the train. 
How long you wait for the train can also depend on how many trains they're running. They have four different engines. However, they often only run two or three. Today, they're running two. So it was about eight or so minutes in between each train coming through at each station. But truly, it doesn't get more quintessentially Disney or iconic than riding the railroad. Also, I'm having like a little nerd moment because the train I got to ride, the engine I got to ride was the Roy O. Disney engine, uh, which is the oldest one of the engines. It's uh, over 105 years old. But also, again, when I did that tour, when I did the Magic Behind Our Steam Trains tour, that is the one I got to operate around the tracks. So I've actually sat inside the engine and, and rung the whistle and the bell and lit the fire inside of it and done the brakes and the whole shebang. So cool Disney moment. And now I'm headed to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. The train took a perfect amount of time. So now I'm here well within my lightning lane window. And that's what I mean. Again, you're going to want to alternate between your lightning lanes. And then if you've got a gap in time, do something like riding the train, meet a character, have a snack, do attractions like Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid, Tomorrowland Speedway, Magic Carpets of Aladdin, shows like Enchanted Tiki Room, Mickey's Philhar Magic, Carousel of Progress. Those are all great fillers to do in between your big e-tickets. Glad we have a lightning lane for Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. It has a 90 minute wait right now. Yikes. This is, I believe the attraction I booked in the one o'clock spot. And then I modified it to a time that would be better. And I'm gonna go ahead and tap in. I'm very excited to ride the wildest ride in the wilderness. Okay. Has a 40 inch height requirement. Little bit of a step up from Seven Doors Mine Train, but definitely not as intense as something like a rock and roller coaster. Still a great family coaster, a quintessential Disney classic, and I'm very excited that it's nighttime because it's even better when the sun's down. <laughs> Thunder Mountain, so, so much fun. However, it went down for technical difficulties like right after I got off the ride, which does lead me to remind you that if an attraction that you do have a lightning lane for has technical difficulties, the system should automatically issue you a redemption recovery pass. That pass can be used at the attraction that you had originally booked. So in this case, it would have been Big Thunder Mountain Railroad at any time later in the day once it comes back up or there's also a list of other attractions you can use it at so if it's a mid-tier attraction and you're not gonna be able to swap it for like seven doors mine train or the best ride in the park if you're over at hollywood studios and star tours goes down you're not gonna be able to use it over at rise of the resistance uh, but you can check and see what you're able to use it at and then book yourself another lightning lane that one doesn't count anymore that one is its own little freebie that you get to hold off to the side. That one no longer impacts your Genie Plus. I'm here to get myself a little snack. And then it's time to ride my favorite ride in the parks. But I learned a valuable lesson along the way that I'm excited to share with you all so you don't make the same mistake I did. Because the train took longer than I expected it to, I realized as I was about to board that I was not gonna be able to make it all the way to Space Mountain because I knew I was gonna ride the train and then I was gonna do Big Thunder Mountain Railroad and maybe Pirates of the Caribbean. And I knew there was no way I was gonna get all the way across uh, the park back to Space Mountain with enough time to use my lightning lane. So I started to go in and modify it, but then I got distracted by the joy of being on the train. You get it. And uh, then when I actually went to select another option, it wouldn't let me. And I thought maybe it just timed out or something like that. And then I kept trying to select different things and it wouldn't let me select anything. I realized it's because that window had closed. So even though I could still see it in the My Day tab of my Disney experience, I could see that I had a 510 to 610 Lightning Lane for Space Mountain and I could click the modify. It wouldn't let me pick anything else. And I can only assume that's because the window had closed. This was like 613 that I was trying to do this at. So 
learn from my mistake. If you are not going to make it to a lightning lane, make sure you modify it prior to that window closing. Otherwise, you won't be able to modify it at all, and therefore you'll lose one of your lightning lane spots that you are turned to book. Had a few minutes to kill before my Pirates Lightning Lane, and what better use of time than get one of my favorite snacks in the Magic Kingdom. First Magic Kingdom snack of 2023, the Cheeseburger Spring Rolls. Coincidentally, it's also going to be the first trash can meal of 2023. Don't judge me, you know you've done it. Um, the spring rolls are one of my favorite eats here. It's at a little cart right outside Adventureland. They have two different kinds of spring rolls. Currently they have cheeseburger ones as well as they still have the 50th anniversary pastrami and pepper jack. They're basically those ingredients shoved into a fried spring roll and they're delicious. The cheeseburger ones are my favorite, although I will say I do like the pastrami ones as well. I am looking forward to them mixing it up though. Before the 50th, they would mix up the different flavors. They've had buffalo chicken, they've had Philly cheesesteak, they had pepperoni pizza. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they bring this year, but cheers. Mm. They are so unbelievably delicious. It's everything you like about a cheeseburger shoved into a crispy spring roll. They're super duper cheesy. They've got that pickly taste, lean ground beef. This secret dipping sauce is like some kind of garlic aioli. Amazing. Big fan. I don't love many of the quick service restaurants here in Magic Kingdom. So for me, I choose to snack around. And these definitely could be a snack if you share or a good meal for one. Ooh, baby, it is so busy right now. Headed to use my last booked Lightning Lane, Piratas del Caribe, my favorite Magic Kingdom attraction. It is a busy, busy evening. I don't know the last time I was in this park when it was this busy, if I'm being honest with you. 11 attractions have waits of an hour or longer. Multiple of those are 90 minutes or longer. I know Genie is really tough to swallow between the cost, between how complicated it is. I, I understand, but I do think they've made some improvements to the system with that modify button. I think that's a huge improvement. I think stacking, especially if you're coming in later in the day, is a great way to use the system. And I just think if you're coming, especially when it's busy, busy like this, it's pretty much the only way to, to avoid waiting in multiple hour plus long lines. As we walk over towards Pirates of the Caribbean, I do want to talk about park hopping. You can park hop with Genie and you can set up your tip board to pin things on your second park as well. What you're gonna do is under my day, you're gonna do plan for your next park. Click that. It's gonna ask, ask you which park is next. I'm just gonna say Epcot. Uh, then you slide what time you'll be going to Epcot. So you could have done this hours ago. It, it realistically cuts you off at whatever time the park closes. I'm saying seven to nine at Epcot. It's gonna think about it. It's gonna ask if anybody else is going with you. And then you can select the things you care about over at Epcot. So I might care about Frozen, Guardians, and uh, the Seas, because of my friend Mr. Eel. Same way you set up your day the first time, you can set up the second time. And then that way, when you go over to your tip board, scroll all the way up, and you go to Epcot, it's pinned your Epcot things up here too. Using Genie Plus when park hopping can be really beneficial, especially if you're gonna start your day in a park like Animal Kingdom that you may not need Genie at, but you're planning on hopping to a busier park like Magic Kingdom or like Hollywood Studios. The same way I spent the morning at my house stacking lightning lanes to come into Magic Kingdom in the afternoon, you could have spent the day in Animal Kingdom stacking lightning lanes at your next park that you wanna to go to. There's a finer balance if both parks you're going to have a lot of big attractions, like if you're hopping from Magic Kingdom over to Epcot and you want to do all the mountains and Remy and Frozen. I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm just saying it takes a little bit more strategy. Prior to the Genie Plus change where they added the modification feature, I did days where I park hopped between Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios and Epcot and Hollywood Studios. That's what members of the MAMFAM and our Discord community said would be the most helpful. If you're not in Discord yet, jump in there. Al and Max and I have a lot of fun chatting with the community. We also get ideas for new videos, answer questions, it's a, it's a good time. So join our Discord. It's like a if Facebook and Slack had a beautiful, beautiful baby. Also check out those videos if you want more of an idea on how to park hop. I plan to do another park hopping one. So come on over to Discord and let me know which combo of parks would be the most helpful. But for now, it's time to sail the stormy seas. Arr, mateys. Captain of Ast has made it to Disney World. Da. Pirates of the Caribbean is my favorite ride in the Magic Kingdom. Coincidentally, it's also my favorite ride in Disneyland. 
And it's got a 65 minute wait right now, so I'm thrilled and tickled to have a lightning lane for it. Pirates of the Caribbean is a family friendly boat ride, and I've said it before, but I will say it again to me, it is a perfect Disney attraction. It's a little bit scary, but it's still family friendly. It's a boat, which is a quintessential Disney style attraction. It's got original music, but it's been updated with current and more recent films. Uh, and it was the last attraction that Walt Disney himself worked on. I just adore that attraction. Also, it took like 15 or so minutes to get on the attraction and I was in the lightning lane which as a friendly reminder, pack those patient pants. Just because you're in the lightning lane doesn't mean it's a walk-on, it just means it's a more expedited line than the standby queue, and considering it was 65 minutes, I'll take it. Want to end this bad boy on a high note, and for me, it does not get any better than Pirates of the Caribbean, but before we wrap, let's do a roundup of all the best tips and tricks for G+. Plus. Number one, always have one booked especially with that new modify feature as soon as you're able go ahead and book a next one if it's not exactly the time you want or not exactly the attraction you want use that modify feature to fiddle faddle pull down refresh 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 and hopefully you're able to secure something else i was able to get pirates at a time i wanted i saw attractions that had gone earlier in the day come back so fiddle faddle remains another one of my biggest tips Additionally, set an alarm for whatever time that little blue bar at the top of the screen says. That way you are never late on booking your next lightning lane. If you are coming into the park later in the day, make sure you take advantage of stacking. Use that 120 minute rule and book one every chance that you get. That way when you walk into the park, you've got plenty of attractions ready to go. And then in between those big attractions, use those filler rides, get snacks, see entertainment, etc. I was in the park today for about four hours and I was able to do six of the most popular rides in the Magic Kingdom, four of them with Genie Plus Lightning Lanes, one as a fancy ride, and of course, one was the train. Also, had one of my favorite snacks, so I would say a pretty good day. Hopefully this was a good Genie 101 guide, refresher, masterclass, whatever you want to call it. Let me know what combinations of park you want to see next, what else is helpful when it comes to Genie Plus. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Genie Plus is an incredibly complicated system, but if you learn how to use it and use it well, it can be incredibly helpful to get a lot done and have the best park days ever. So let me know what else you want to know down in the comments. Let me know what else you want to see next. In the meantime, let's make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media. And until next time, friends, I'm I, and it's been magical. Now go watch our Magic Kingdom Secrets video. I'm headed to record a podcast. Good night.